How does this West Virginia Mountaineer football team look different going into 2024 spring practice than they did in 2023? I'm going to bring on somebody who's been at practice and can give us a little bit of insight on what he's seeing, and that's Mr. Mike Oste from WV Sports Now. And we're going to talk to Mike right after this word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or come in today to the home of friends and family pricing only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. What is up? Come on in. Make yourself at home. Bail yourself up to the bar. And let me pour you out a shot of top shelf college football content on tap at Cousins Corner. In this episode, we are talking about West Virginia Mountaineer spring practice. We're going to talk about how the team looks different this spring than they did last spring. A uh, lot more veteran players on this team. A lot of guys with experience, a lot of production returning. So we're going to talk to Mike Oste, who's been able to observe some spring practice and, and kind of get his insight on what looks different in 2024 and, and what he's been impressed by and maybe not so impressed by. So without further ado, let's bring on Mr. Mike Oste. Mike, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. No complaints. Yeah. I can't Appreciate complain you. either. That's that's Appreciate all you, you coming ask. on the show. <laughs> no problem, man. That's all you can ask for. Absolutely. If you have no Absolutely. complaints, then power through. <laughs> well, I could complain, but yeah, I, somebody's got worse problems than me. I'm. Sure well, that's true. I always can complain, but there's no yeah. need to complain. Exactly. Maybe the there you go. I don't have. Yeah. A, I don't have a need to complain right now. Agreed. Same here, man. Um. We're recording this kind of late, so I, again, appreciate you taking time out. Um, real quick, let's just dive right into it, man. I, I've been um, I've heard a little bit of commentary from some some others in the media about the football team, and but yeah. I wanted to get your take on it. I know there's some, I mean, obviously a lot of returning production on this team, especially on the offensive side of the ball. So let's start with the offensive side of the ball. Let's just start there. What are you seeing this year that stands out to you as being a lot different, maybe from last spring when you were able to observe practice? And Neil Brown did talk about this, where the vibe's different because instead of trying to figure out who's going to play where, and there's still some position battles and things to mm -hmm. figure out, but it's mostly bringing back continuity. It's having chemistry and trying to get yourself to another level. Garrett Green talked about it's one thing to move from five to nine wins, but getting to 10 or 11, winning the mm -hmm. Big 12, that's about chemistry and getting to another level. So I have seen the team getting to another level and working on that chemistry, but you also have the addition of Jaden Bray. He was a sight to see, okay? He, he's somebody that the coaches talked about him, the players talked about him. It was evident there at practice. He has a veteran experience to bring, and he's also a, a presence out there. So he's very mobile. He's very shifty. He's very fast, but he also has the body. That was evident there. And I will also say, which was evident that you could see with your eyes, that in addition to building the chemistry, bringing everyone together and trying to get themselves to the next level, rather than just figure things out and who's going to play where and, and, and things like that, like they were doing a year ago and certainly even doing two years ago, players that were there look like they're in better shape. Traylon mm -hmm. Ray looks like a beast right now and obviously had wow. a great freshman season, but he made a couple highlight reel catches at practice the other day. He looks like he could really take another jump up. I will say the, the recruit, the four star that had all the hype who I even covered a, a little bit in my region. And then Neil Brown called a local recruit, even though he was mm -hmm. in PA and not West Virginia was Rodney Gallagher. Right. He didn't involve himself too much in the offense last year, a little bit, but mostly a gadget player, mm -hmm. certainly involved in special teams. His big moment was, you know, in the FCS game where he almost actually screwed up the touchdown. Wasn't mm -hmm. the year that probably followed all the hype, everyone right. covering him from high school on, but he looked to be in much better shape. Now, I will say he didn't look to be in Traylon Ray level shape, but he looked to be in much better shape, bigger, which mm -hmm. is key. And Neil Brown flat out said that while his body type is more fluid than Traylon Ray and even Hudson Clement, who I'll get to in a moment, mm -hmm. and they both look like they're rocked and they're ready to go. 
Gallagher has a little bit more room to go because he was such more of a slender, smaller player before and played mm-hmm. quarterback in high school. So he had to learn the position. Mm-hmm. Neil Brown's not worried about the up and down and the lack of production from the freshman season. He now told us Rodney Gallagher is going to be involved as a receiver. So for better or yeah. worse, they, they can't wait around anymore. This was a four-star kid. Right. Uh, his family is probably <laughs> knocking at the door. He's still back. Eventually, maybe he would leave if he's not getting more than gadget plays, even though he didn't really boost his value last year. So it is time for Rodney Gallagher to have a couple moments to shine. And they have youth athleticism players returning, but also the players that were there are going to be utilized more, maybe differently, and they mm-hmm. appear to be in much better shape. And then the player that everyone raved about that also it was evident in how he appeared was Hudson Clement. I mean, if we were talking a year ago, he was a walk-on that no one outside of West Virginia really had heard of and no one figured was going to be an impact force. He was one of their top receivers, arguably their top receiver last season. He could be that again, probably behind Jaden Bray. And I would not be surprised with, with more big plays from Hudson Clement or he takes his game to another level because Brown literally referred to him as the player that had the best off season is in the best yeah. shape out of everybody. So that's all big. It's still going to be, a, you know, a power offense through the ground and Garrett green is going to do his thing. He, he has to be smarter with the football. He talked a lot about that and they did show us when we were there, as you would imagine mm-hmm. a lot more of green drops back, throws a laser beam to Traylon Ray or somebody. They were trying to show off a little bit. It wasn't Mm -hmm. a real methodical play after play after play. They didn't give us that many formations, a lot of drills. A lot of this is also what they told us verbally. So media has only been allowed to be at one practice so far. We're still early in the spring. But based on what I've seen, everyone seems to be in better shape. There does seem to be chemistry there. And it's, it's a different vibe than it was a season ago where you didn't even know who the quarterback was. This is now a team that legitimately feels like they can win a Big 12 title. They're coming together for a goal. And it's really about fine-tuning the squad, especially on offense. Whereas last year, again, you didn't know Jaheim White was going to do what he was going to do. You didn't know about Hudson Clint doing what he was going to do. You didn't know who was even the starting quarterback. Think of how crazy that sounds. Yeah. And now they have all that put together, and they're one of the more experienced teams in the Big 12, certainly having played together a full season, mm-hmm. even though they're still a young group. Right. Um, before I ask my next question, I want you to uh, go ahead and plug your uh, your site where the people can find you. Sure. And your work, and if you want to talk about the holler a little bit, go ahead and do that too. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, WV Sports now. We obviously do have coverage of the Mountaineer football season as we're moving into a spring ball now, but also the basketball season and really everything else, Mountaineer. So WV Sports now. You can also find us there on socials, and uh, we do have the holler that that Kuz is alluding to there. There's also a, a connection with him and uh, an opportunity to um, to get his VIP as well. But we we drop some some tidbits certainly on the recruiting end we have a lot of we we we've definitely broke news before so we do it there for the most part now it's a it's a relatively cheap subscription situation 99 percent of our content is still free that does offer you a little bit more in terms of breaking news it also offers you an ad free experience and i have flat out had people tell me they're willing to throw a couple of dollars down just to get the ad free Every site under the sun, as you know, whether whether it's legit media, a blog, no matter what's going on, everybody has some ads there. A couple bucks a month, we would give you none. You'll totally get rid of it. So that's a big deal, too, but we do have breaking news involved there. We have interviews that other people don't always do that are different there. I try to do different interviews than what a colleague may do. So, again, it's the holler. Come join us. We also have uh, some... Pretty cool sit-down interview opportunities. We're going to start rolling along with subscribers that are former players, media members, figures in in Mountaineer history that maybe aren't as prevalent on social media and don't talk to people as often. You'll get to talk with them through the holler. We're going to start unraveling that here. We've had a lot going on over the last few months. It's still a, an ongoing thing. You can get a cool hat like this and maybe other merch. So that's all there in the holler. If you're a student or faculty member, you, you also get a, a special discount as well. So hit me up. It's all on the site. It'll give you information on what level maybe discount can, can come to you. And um, 
we have a lot going on there. We're going to have even more going on there now once we get fully into recruiting season, obviously, for football. Now that the basketball team has a coach, <laughs> they're going to be doing a lot more, obviously, even the women's basketball team. we got connections there, so we're going to be uh, giving you some some news there as well off of the season they just had. So, yeah, come come join us in the holler. Yeah, and uh, Mike alluded to the fact, you know, I appreciate the uh, folks over at WV Sports now partnering with me and here on the channel. If you want to get a discount on a one-year membership to the Holler, use promo code COOZ, C-O-U-Z, just like you see it on the screen. At checkout, you get a 40% discount off a one-year membership. Instead of paying $34.99, you pay $20.99 a month. Big, big-time discount. And Mike's right. I, I signed up myself. The ad-free is worth it, man. You go through <laughs> yeah. there and boom. I'm like, yeah. man, I, no ads. You know, occasionally, I'll use one of your all's ads on a, on a YouTube show. Okay, and I I I, I got to I got to get through the ads on my, you know and, and I don't and I do it for other right. people too but with right. yours I'm like man I could just put the ad up there I don't have to deal with the I mean the article yeah. up there I don't have to deal with all yeah. the ads and yeah anyway so, yeah and uh, how many uh, sites out there again no shade at anybody but there's not that many sites you can think of really that cover anything that have that will give you no ads and there are even mm -hmm. some subscription outlets out there they'll give you breaking news similar or otherwise to us mm -hmm. but there's still ads yeah no ads. Especially because I use I, I consume a lot of content and I even write a lot of content on my phone because I'm so busy. To have uh, ads popping up on your phone just sucks. So so no ads is a big deal for me. <laughs> that that would hook yeah. me in. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I, I like that feature definitely. So whoever made that decision, whether it was you or one of your colleagues, <laughs> that was a good call on that. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, back back to the football. Um, yeah. Zach Frazier leaving obviously is a big deal. Uh, I still I still feel like the offensive line is going to be pretty good, but I think Coach Brown alluded to the fact that Brandon Yates is probably going to be the guy there, or maybe it was may, it may have been uh, Coach Scott, right. but one of them did. And I, you know, they haven't put pads on yet, so I'm not sure how much you could tell. But mm -hmm. um, and what you saw with the offensive line, did you see anything that that kind of stuck stuck out as being a surprise to you or? Something new? Did anybody stand out more than, more than the others? Um, no, I can't say the word surprise or stood out, really. Again, they haven't put pads on. I didn't see any bungled snaps. I didn't see any lack of chemistry. I didn't see any problems there. Yeah, Yates, and you used the term. It's been alluded to. If I had to guess, that would be probably the guy. No mm -hmm. one's going to replace Zach Frazier and give you what Zach Frazier was. Garrett Green even talked about it. We asked him. He's now one of the older players in the room, certainly experienced having right. been on campus. And that's a complete 180 of what he had the last couple of years, whether it be in the quarterback room or certainly under Zach Frazier to be the leader. So a lot of the things Zach Frazier did outside of the field and even calling meetings in the locker room or even as simple as running the group chat for the offense to go, let's have a bowling night when we're, we're clearly off from practice. Green has to do that now. That's more on Green's plate that was previously on Frazier's. So it may sound minor, but that's more for the QB, and that's a difference. This is going to be a different season for, for Garrett Green to have to worry about more. And obviously, Zach Frazier is going to be an NFL player in terms of intelligence and athleticism. Mm -hmm. He, If he would have came out last year, he'd probably been a third or fourth rounder. It, I, I can guarantee you he's not getting out of the second round, probably mid-second round. I, I covered the Steelers, too, and I, I've, I've told people on their shows, if the Steelers think they're going to sit back at 51 and take Zach Frazier and go another way in the first round, and then they're just going to chill at 51 and get Zach mm -hmm. Frazier, they got something else coming because he's going to be gone. They're going to have yeah. to trade up to get him. That's where his yeah. stock's going. So you're, it's going to be hard to replace that guy. I'd imagine it's Yates. They do have continuity there as well, though, at least from the offensive line standpoint of nobody's Frazier, nobody's even Nestor. You're, you're losing Nestor too. But a lot of those players last year that were under them and maybe casual fan wouldn't have heard of, they got significant minutes last mm -hmm. year because of injuries. I mean, Thomas right. Remack missed games, Nestor missed games. Yep. Frazier obviously at the end of the year had his runoff there to uh, – so didn't play in the bowl that they, they had significant time that they were able to play with green, with the offense, with the coaching staff, more than if you're just promoting a full on backup who never sees the field. And, and Frazier was hogging all the minutes mm -hmm. at center, for example, or even other positions. Frazier obviously didn't play under center. 
uh, in the bowl game that didn't play center there. So I'd imagine that would be Yates. I don't have major concerns. I, I you know, I, I don't think anyone necessarily might be an all American. I don't think you're going to compete with what Frazier did, but I don't think the offensive line is going to screw things up. What could hold the offense back is Garrett Green obviously emerged last year, but you see 29 touchdowns, you see all the yards passing and running. He's a force. Neil Brown said it last year without him. We, 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 with him, we have a chance to win every game without him. We're losing half of these games easily. Mm -hmm. And even though they won with Nico when they did win the brawl, Nico had 80 yards in that game. They got lucky. Yeah. The defense played lights out and uh can even ask my pit colleagues, uh, Phil Jerkovic helped them out by, yeah. by being wet. Yeah. I mean, throwing a couple interceptions, that point is hammered home so much that he's now trying to be a tight end in, in, in the pros. Like he, he literally yeah. is off the position. So that stuff's not going to happen again. You can't rely on that again. And also, I wrote about this the other day. The 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 ding, Green completed only 52.9% of his passes. He's on all mm -hmm. these top 10 lists from PFF, everyone else saying he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league, certainly in the Big 12. Name me another one that completed uh, passes at that such low of a percentage. They're all 55 above, if not 60 yeah. plus above. So Green said that got to be increased. He got to be more accurate. Green brought that up too. He does have to be smarter. Let's face it. Mm -hmm. All the games he won. If he kept his helmet on, they win one more and they're at 10. So yeah. that he played great in that game and threw that, that what could have been a game winner to Hudson Clement. It's hard to put that on him, but he's mm -hmm. the first one to say that my lack of smarts in that moment or my passion got to me and it did cost us a game against the bad team in Houston. So those things can happen again, but I would imagine the offense is not going to be the problem here, whether it be the offensive line, the weapons, their their weapons galore. Cole Taylor, I will say, to throw out there for anyone who doesn't know, he's not officially quote-unquote out, which is why that hasn't been reported during spring, but he is limited and will never be touched. <laughs> so right. he's not going to be reported as out where he's away from campus, but what he does during practice and will continue to do is literally run around the field in shorts. So he's not going to be touched. Neil Brown even said, mm -hmm. you only have so many car crashes on you and so many hits on you. You're not wasting them here. If he's not hundred yeah. percent, CJ Donaldson, of course, also coming off the surgery. He's not fully hundred percent either. Unfortunately, because he needs to have a big year and kind of rebound from last year's struggles, but he's once again coming into a season of yeah. an injury. Like you could argue the excuse from last year. Well, yeah. that's here again, but yeah. they now have Jaheim White at least to kind of make up for that. And Jalen Anderson's going to get a lot of touches and chances as well. They need depth in that position more than just those two guys, especially if yep. CJ's hurt. But mm -hmm. Brown did say that even now in spring and then in the fall and the early season, it, I believe he used the terminology like it's his last chance. Like this is it. I mean, there, there, it, he would cut. Brown was even kind of stern in his voice. He said he has all the talent in that. the world, yeah. but they're not waiting around. So if, I, I wouldn't even be shocked if he fumbles it two or three times in the spring game that you don't even see him in the fall. Like he needs to have a good spring, have mm -hmm. a good spring game, have a good fall camp. Anytime he's near the football or touches it, he has to impress. There is really no room for error. It seems so. If I had to throw out one player, there's no room for error. That could be a surprise. Mm -hmm. He's away from the program. Maybe it's him, and he gets yeah. quote unquote cut. Uh, that did happen with a couple of players last year that we later knew. So, right. I think the offense is going to mostly be fine. There are things they have to replace, but and Tyler Allen as well. Having him promoted, that's continuity for Green. So mm -hmm. it's not a big name like people maybe wanted, but I think that is actually a positive because that really works with somebody that Green's been with for years, even if he wasn't in that exact position, because it's not great for quarterback to have a new position coach constantly, new offensive right. coordinator constantly, whether you're the starter or not. So to have that continuity there, I think is a positive. These are, these are common coaches that he's right. been around. And, and, and I definitely expect the offense to perform. I don't expect too many games like the brawl where the offense can't move the ball. But do I expect 35 plus points tonight, like some are predicting? That might be hard to say. They got to take care of the football. They got to play smart. They got to be accurate. And maybe we'll see Garrett Green throwing more dumper checkdowns and we'll see what Jaheim White does with it mm -hmm. rather than trying to go deep all the time or trying to make something out of nothing. But Jaden Bray 
is walking in to re- basically replace Devin Carter's role right. as the yep. veteran wide receiver one who can be the leader in the locker room, who can teach these young guys, who can teach them how to work out as well as play, who can be the big body receiver that can go deep but also can go underneath. And mm-hmm. let's face it, Devin Carter was a disappointment at doing that last season. He's not going to be in the NFL because he didn't boost any kind of value by coming to West Virginia. I would imagine Jaden Bray is going to be that and then some. He is far better for me from what I've seen than even how Devin Carter looked at this point last year and certainly what Devin Carter was at West Virginia or at North Carolina. Jaden Bray has been in Big 12 championship games. I think having him is already an improvement of that guy from a year ago. And then everybody else who was there last year emerging should be even better with more seasoning and their bodies look like they're more ready to have great years as well. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, I know Garrett's been working with a quarterback coach throughout the offseason to help his mechanics. Yeah. Um, because he did need to fix his mechanics to fix his accuracy. Have you seen – did you – again, I know you've only seen one practice, but did you see any difference in Garrett and in, in his uh, in, and his accuracy and, and his mechanics while you were there? That's hard to say, too. They didn't get in that many formations, and we weren't really allowed to – you know, live tweet or shoot those, right. but I didn't see him throw any horrible incompletions. I didn't see him overthrow anybody. Again, what we did see at practice, unfortunately, is probably not exactly what he's talked about or what he's maybe going to do because it is weird. Mm-hmm. He he says he needs to be smarter with the football and maybe look to a check down. We saw a lot more deep passes at practice. Right. We didn't yeah. see many check downs. So I'd imagine there's going to be some checkdowns, but no, I, I didn't yeah. see anything that was egregiously different. Certainly not negative. I, I will say he did talk about having that quarterback coach and Neil Brown was even honest because I think John and tonic even asked him, would you have been willing to work with a QB coach? Who's not getting paid by WVU 10 years ago. And Neil Brown honestly said at that time, no, but now yes. And part of his answer was now you have to, I mean, players want to have outside coaches. They want to have people that work with them individually. They have those people they trust that are not part of the program, and that's just how it is. So you can't really be resistant to it, but he works a lot with the program. Apparently, Green has said that everything that he shows him or what he's going to work on or he sends him film and they work together all goes back to Brown, all goes back to Tyler Allen, to Chad Scott, etc. So having him more discussed also does tell me that there's a lot more work being done with him and that maybe he's to another level. They didn't have many conversations about him last year. What he did last year, I imagine he'll do again. He's been a staple there is also go down to the Manning passing Academy. He did that last year that, that really helped him last year. We talked a lot about how that helped him last year, but It is about the accuracy. I mean, I understand because people have argued this too, that completion percentage can be an overrated stat. There are a lot of football nerds that don't even want to look at that at all because it's not really fair as as we're talking about. If you just check it down a bunch of times, you got a 75% completion percentage, but like 100 yards if they don't go anywhere with it. And then is that really better than someone who throws for 300 and maybe is at 65% versus your 75 because they're moving the ball more and they're having to throw more deep passes, which are more likely to not potentially be as uh, as completed as the checkdowns. But the number's out there. Neil Brown wants the completion percentage higher. So does Garrett Green. They want it over 60, if not more than that. And maybe that's just indirectly going to happen if he plays smarter and checks it down more. Brown's probably arguing that the reason why your percentage is so low is because even though it's potential home run every, every now and then with you, sometimes you also try to do too much. You miss a check down, you try to go deep. That's not caught or it's intercepted or something happens. That's negative. And why not we check it down if we can, because you have a lot of weapons around you. So all of that will come, But the literal conversation about completion percentage was brought up. I mean, that is flat out. They want that number higher. They do not want an elite quarterback at 52.9, which I weirdly have it memorized now. Um, But so that'll that'd be something to watch. And this also will be an interesting cam for Nico. He's not obviously going to start. There's no quarterback competition here. But Brown did talk about him. And I will say he looked a lot crisper and better. And 
in great spirits for a kid that was a top four star recruit that many of us thought, okay, green emerged great for WU. Nico's going to have to go. Like if you're Nico's father or brother or friend, you probably would say, Hey kid, if you want to play football, you're looking at probably two more years on the bench. Certainly at least one, depending on what green's future is with eligibility and all of that. And no, he decided to stick around longer. We haven't talked to him yet, so we'll get why, but from what I've heard, continuity with the coaching staff he wants to keep on getting better you know he got he got kicked around a little bit and uh, in some incentives and i don't know where his value was to play elsewhere yeah they won games but he wasn't throwing numbers up so maybe he thought okay i got more eligibility i'm do one more i'll do one more year of this he might even figure green's gonna miss a, a game or two because that's just how it usually goes so he probably will play outside the fcs game but i think nico's looked a lot better than he was at this point last year. So I'd imagine if he has to go in, they're going to be able to move the ball a little bit with Nico. He actually is showing off a little bit more of his downfield passing, which we didn't see that much uh, in the brawl. But of course, this is the Garrett Green show. He's the starter. There's right. no competition here. This isn't like last year, even two years ago. It's Green. They're better or worse with Garrett Green. If he's missing two or three games, it's not a good thing for the program, even if mm -hmm. Nico can maybe be better for you. But he, it's interesting to watch Nico because – He's way better than he was as well. And Brown brought that Good. up too. This, this is interesting for Nico. This camp's important for him. And outside of those two, I mean, there's other QBs out there, but it's pretty much uh, the, those two if anyone has to has to do anything. But no, I, offensively, it's been most con mostly continuity and kind of trying to mm -hmm. figure things out and building chemistry. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast earlier today that said what they noticed was how the offense this year mm – -hmm. Like, even at the second practice, they were already doing like a quasi scrimmage already, even though they didn't have pads on. They were kind of, and last year they yeah. weren't able to do because they were still in teaching mode. They yeah. Don't have so they do as much teaching this year as they yeah. have in the past. That's an interesting point. That and thing? that just, yeah, I, I didn't see them physically do a legit scrimmage. Um, now, there are some medium that are literally it was good on good work. It was good on good that, work type stuff. Yeah. yeah yeah, I mean, some of that occurred. I will say they they certainly looked in good spirits. There were moments where they would get into maybe three linemen. It wasn't like a legit formation you see in a game, but getting three linemen, a receiver goes deep, green throws it out. They all celebrated a touchdown. Their referees were there. They, they didn't have any where they weren't going against the defense. But, yeah, I saw moments like that. I did hear about that. Uh, I know that there were some media members that that work for the program that were, that were invited to a couple other sessions where they – kind of did what you're you're hearing about there so that's the difference but it's just natural too i mean honestly yeah that analysis that you're giving we don't even have to be there to be able to say that they have players that were there last year that were producing last year that now are in better shape plus new players that yeah you need to acclimate but we're talking about a kid who's been in the big 12 title game multiple times he knows what to do at a major program just tell him where you know where to get a have a beer on the weekend and where you know, the, the best uh, wings are and when we're assuming he's 21 and where to go for different things and in, in the facility. But otherwise, football, they're all good. So, yes, there's less teaching this year. It's again, it's building off of what 2023 was. I think that's this is the simplest thing. The West Virginia Mountaineers, especially offensively, are building off of 2023 to get better and go to another level. Whereas in 2023, they were trying to fix 2022 and be better and get rid of it. And there was nothing they wanted to build off of there. They they had kind of a new system in. Graham Harrell's gone. JT's gone. It's not air raid anymore. They weren't successful really at the end of the season even. Season went nowhere. Very disappointing. We know it. They, did, they wanted to get that stench away. This team is very willing to celebrate last year. And they're excited to have everybody back. They're excited to build off of this. You can tell the vibes are improved. I'm sure you've seen this too. Neil Brown is in a much better mood. I'll say that. When I was around him at practice last year, yeah, he was very stoic, stone cold face. He was yelling. He was MF and people, and I don't mean media, but like players, if they would screw yeah. up on a play, he was yelling. He felt it. You could feel he felt the pressure that was on him, and he wasn't having fun. I'm sure you could even see it just in the press conferences. Yeah, I can. I'll tell you. It. Yeah, I'll tell you. Keenan Cummings and I were standing out there just watching practice. He came over to us, 
started asking Keenan because his kids are older about if one's going to go in gymnastics, the other one's going to go in baseball. He then asked me how my daughter is doing, and she's almost two. I told him how she threw a snow globe across the room the other day. He mm -hmm. thought that was hilarious. Like, we had, like, a father, you know, we're fathers mm -hmm. kind of moment there for a good five minutes. Neil Brown's cracking jokes. He's saying your first name. He calls me Mike all the time rather than just kind of, like, rolling your eyes <laughs> when I was mm -hmm. asking a question last year. He seems – in a much more comfortable, yeah. better mood space. And I think that's rubbing off on the team as well. You could maybe argue they were pressing because he was pressing. That yeah. is now not there. So I do think they're building off last year. He's building off last year. And the, the vibes there are, are way, way better. I can't even say it enough. They're way better than what it was at this point a season ago. And they ended up proving people wrong and they're all happy about that. But at this point in the season ago, they didn't they didn't know that was going to happen, and everyone right. would have been fired if it didn't go well in the first few games. So the the vibes are way yeah. way better now than they were. But yeah, I've not seen any major issues or anything like that. The who plays center is really the main thing to look for in terms of a position battle offensively. But I would say the defense is a little bit more interesting to look at and see yeah. how they replace players in the secondary, how a player like Aiden Garns fits in uh, from Duquesne. How does he fit in? Even how do the Northwestern uh, <laughs> players there, the, the pair of DBs from Northwestern, how do they fit in? Reed Carrico, I saw a lot mm -hmm. of him. He was he looked really, really good uh, from what I saw in practice. They didn't really have anything close to a scrimmage, but just in drills, there's more question marks on defense for me than offense. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a great segue because that was going to be, I was going there next anyway. Um, it's surprising me because when you look at Reed, I, I want to stick to Reed Carrico for a minute. When you think about yeah. him, he, he, he barely saw the field at Ohio State. He basically sure. played special teams there. Right. So, but yet he was a pretty highly talented recruit out of high school. So it makes you want, now I understand it's Ohio State. They're one of the top programs yeah. in the country. I get that. But, you, you would think he'd at least be a second stringer or, you know, at least play. So, you know, when I saw him, the I thought the excitement over getting him would, might have been a little bit overhyped. But then I've heard interviews with uh, Drew Fabianich. Yeah. He's mentioned his name a couple of times. When I ask him, you know, what guys stand out to you, and Drew seems like the type of guy that doesn't BS about anything. He's, he's a straight shooter. And he's even yeah. admitted that on a couple of shows. But he uh, – because he has to because that's his job, right? He has to be right, right. honest yeah. with the players. But he's mentioned how he looked. He thought he would do well in this in this defense. And then I heard uh, – I've heard a couple other people talk about it. Um, they think that he might actually do better at West Virginia because he's a better fit for what West Virginia wants to do defensively than maybe what Ohio State – it may not have been, you know – uh, negative toward his ability or anything at Ohio State. Maybe he just wasn't a fit for what they were doing there. Yeah, I definitely have heard that he wasn't a fit there because I do. Th I kind of agree with you in all honesty. To make this clear, getting him was good. Even before I've seen him in practice, obviously mm -hmm. getting a recruit of that caliber, a talented player like that, somebody that Ohio State would put on the roster, that's good. That, that mm -hmm. it's a good thing. It's not a negative thing. Right. But there were people acting like the West Virginia stole the starting linebacker from the Ohio State Buckeyes. Right. That was where the hype was. Like people saw Ohio State. This is different than getting a player from Kent State or I mentioned Aiden right. Barnes at Duquesne. Yeah, you do have a lot of mid-major players and, and group of five players that get dispersed, and that's common around the country. It's not just West Virginia that either they're ready for the next level. And one I'm going to mention actually here in a moment, who I think will have an impact that Brown mentioned too, mm -hmm. but he's from Troy, for example, to, to allude right. to that guy. So people are going to, okay, Troy, I'm rolling my eyes. It's just a Brown connection. We got an Ohio State player, so that's what the fans are going to really freak right. out. And Ohio State, right. that's a big deal. Similar to... They're not Ohio State, but getting Garnet Hollis and getting Jaheim Joseph out of Northwestern, yep. played in the Big Ten. Beanie Bishop did have Minnesota, even though Western Kentucky before coming over. Cole Taylor, I think the hype was there with Cole Taylor, too. He had a great year. I don't know if yeah. he necessarily had one of the best tight end seasons in the country that some were thinking was going to happen because they did open up the offense a bit, but he can even do more. He said that. Right. They said that. You can see more from him. But people fed into that, too. Wow. LSU tight end, SEC. But in similar to what you're saying about Carrico, Cole Taylor was never able to be what he was last year at West Virginia 
even at LSU. Right. Like, that's why he came aboard. He has the talent. He's big. He can catch the football. But they barely used him, too. So there's a reason why these players are transferring over. But but speaking mm-hmm. back to Reed Carrico, yeah, he's looked like the real deal. Number one, he looks like a leader out there. Yeah. He's calling out players and giving them constructive criticism if need be. He's pointing players where to go in particular drills. I'm sure he's going to call out players that didn't physically see that because they didn't really run any plays on the defense. Mm-hmm. But he is a very smart, athletic player. He looked like he had been there forever. It might be more of a fit. And I have heard from people around the country nationally that the reason why maybe he didn't play that much at Ohio State is it wasn't a fit. It'd be interesting when we talk to him and sit down with him because I do kind of even want to ask him straight up. And you know this goes on with recruiting. Mm -hmm. In retrospect, was maybe Ohio going to Ohio State not the best choice for you? I'll yeah. try to find some way to ask that because right. when you go to when you when Ohio State offers you, it's hard to say no. It's the right. Ohio State Buckeyes. You want to be a part of it, but being in the right fit, being somewhere where you're going to play, still having the spotlight on you in a major conference is better than not playing at Ohio State and maybe just riding the coattails to a playoff appearance or a Big Ten title. It is better to play, especially if you want a career outside of college ball. So I think he eventually realized that. We'll see if he regretted mm-hmm. it, you know, going there in the first place. I'm sure he won't really admit that, but it's probably the case. Right. And I do think he may be more of a fit now. But the the other player that I was alluding to is the other end of the spectrum. You have a Big Ten Ohio State player coming over, getting more playing time, the leader with tons of experience, a big star recruit coming aboard in Recarico. TJ Jackson yeah. is that player from Troy who Brown literally said he's going to have an impact this season on this team. Mm-hmm. And that is a player that looks physically like he is ready to play Big 12 football. He looks like that if you plucked him out of West Virginia uh-huh. and back on Troy, he would be he'd be like the little giants out there. He'd be he'd be towering over everybody and be run, and running over them and they wouldn't be able to handle him. So he looks like he's in much better shape than any film I would have watched from him back at Troy. Awesome. Everyone's saying he's going to fit in. He's going to be perfect. The Jordan Leslie and him have a great relationship. They've known each other for a while. That's all about the fit as well. Right. So I think even though some wish the coaching staff would have been fired a couple years ago, I will say one thing too, that I think is a positive for recruiting. And obviously they can keep pointing to, Hey, we got Beanie Bishop. Uh He wasn't doing anything in Minnesota was a group of five player before he became a consensus. All American just ran the the fastest 40 time for any player in the big 12 pro day. Wow. And he's maybe that. Yeah. He, he was the fastest out there. Anyone in the big 12 pro day. So Maybe he's going to get to the next level and be in the NFL now. That wasn't going to be the case there. They can use him to promote what can happen if in the right system, if used the right way, that he wasn't used that way at Minnesota. But I think this coaching staff offensively and defensively, they found out the fit they're looking for, the type of player they're looking for, whether it be on or off the field. And I get there are going to be people that are going to come back and say, Mike, I'm glad they figured it out. This is year six. Why did it take so damn long? I don't disagree. And I think Neil Brown's been honest about this on shows. It has taken longer than he would have liked it to take. Mm -hmm. But now he's figured out the fit of player on the field. He's figured out the cultural fit of player off the field. He figured out the player that has that chip on his shoulder that also has tons of talent that fits the West Virginia brand and kind of all the great teams kind of had that when they've had that success. And he's even talked about how if you would have had the portal back in the day, maybe if the transfer portal was was, was two years older, we wouldn't have had to wait so long because he he basically admitted to me when I had him on a show that he would have cleaned house when he was in 19. Like the culture wasn't right then after yeah. Dana, now he's getting the culture right. There's no more yeah. cultural problems now. Even Aubrey Burks talked about now yeah. the culture's so sound that he's hanging out with receivers. Like, they're right. all hanging out. They're all friends. He's admitted that wasn't the case two years ago. Yeah. So that is how the player they're looking for. I mean, I am sure of this. I know this, and he's kind of even alluded to this. There were players they offered that are high-caliber players. They sat down with them. Thought they were a fit on the field, uh-huh. didn't like the vibe, right? And and didn't and didn't bring them on board anymore, whether they wow. wanted to come or not. So they they're getting a little bit more greedy with who's there, and and these players I think a hundred percent fit 
the yeah. the situation. It'll be interesting how they they all gel together because you're losing Beanie. You're uh-huh. you're losing some key players from obviously Jared Bartlett's Jacoba. gone. You're lo- yeah, yeah, Copa. Yeah, you're losing a lot of veteran leadership. You have a lot of talent. But are they leaders? Are they veteran leaders? The best players now hadn't been there before. Abby Burke's going to do his thing, but it's him and Sean Martin, basically, are the leaders yeah. of this defense. Eddie V might be another player that steps up and yeah. gives you more. He felt a lot more comfortable in himself, even talking to us at the end of last season. I think more could could come from him uh, as well. And then you you pluck in the recaricos of the world. I, I think yeah. they did well in the offseason, and they'll be better equipped than maybe they would even have been a year ago in terms of depth. But – as they all said, and as Jordan Leslie told us, just like last year, because last year they had to do this because they were so bad the year before, even defensively missing tackles it was so bad. They went back to fundamentals. They did that again this year. They're back to fundamentals. They're treating them like they're 14 years old. They're teaching them how to tackle. They're teaching them how to go at the legs rather than, you know, go at the chest all the time. Yeah. They, they are teaching fundamentals, which I think will help this team moving forward, even though it might be annoying now because they all do know that part of it. Right. Yeah, it's an inter- interesting uh, take on Carrico because that is a lot like what they talked about. And I know Beanie Bishop wasn't at spring camp last year, but once he got to campus, they talked about how he was a leader on the field. Yeah. Uh, even though he was new, he wasn't afraid to speak up. Everybody right. respected him. So for Reed Carrico to be the new quote unquote new guy on campus and still be willing to to do the things you're talking about, yeah, maybe he's kind of that Beanie Bishop for the linebacker room that they thought maybe the because the linebacker group is very young. Yeah, that's yeah. the Trey most important Lathan. group, right? Yeah, you got Trey yeah. Lathan, Trotter, uh, Cutter. They're all young guys, and even though they're extremely yeah. talented, maybe they thought bringing Carrico in, even if Carrico's not, and I don't, maybe he is or isn't, I don't know, but. Yeah. Even if he's not as talented as those guys, yeah, he's been there before. He knows what it takes at the power five or power four level yeah. to win. Yeah. And he can he can help bring those younger guys along. So so for yeah. he, he's to me, he's one of those additions you might add just for culture and for leadership more, I more think- than anything. I could make an argument, and again, I think maybe there are other players that will be more productive on the field, but and not to say he won't be. I you could make an argument, and I would argue his addition, even offense or defense, might be the most important for the reasons that you mentioned. Ben Cutter had to step up last year, and Jordan Leslie was honest. He even said to us all last season, I evaluate Ben Cutter differently than everybody else because I understand it's not even fair to ask him to do what I'm asking him to do, but we're forced to because of Trey Lathan's injury and what happened there and everybody else was out. It almost was like, Ben, if you can't do this, we'd have no one else. It's just you. They had to hope and pray. And he played admirably, but he did show his inexperience at times as well. There was no depth there after Trey Lathan went down. So to get a veteran that's been in the Big Ten, even if he didn't play that much, and still has tons of talent too, and to come over and already feel comfortable because Brown always talks about the first couple of days of spring, I literally have to tell guys where the bathroom is, where the room is that we're going to have the meetings. They don't know. It's just like if you start a new job in the office, you don't know where you're going. So those things take a couple of days. So I was there Wednesday to see this practice. They hadn't been there that long. We we're looking at a few days in. And he has that stuff down, and now he's on the field. He steps foot on the field, and he it's like he had been there forever. So that's a big deal for a position that has been the thinnest and arguably the weakest, and especially when you lose Lee Copa. So now you lose that that leader of the overall linebacker room for those meetings. I'd imagine that is going to be Carrico now who's going to speak up in those meetings. And he hadn't been there before, but they're all going to respect him because, again, whether you played or not, if Ohio State wanted you at some point, I think those kids are going to respect that because Ohio State didn't want all of them. <laughs> so there's a reason. So, uh, you know, that that I think that's a major deal to have him there, no matter how he produces and how that works. But Trey Lathan being healthy this year is going to be a big deal. Got to figure, I mean, when you think about it last year, they won nine games. CJ wasn't healthy the whole year. We know about the end of the season, not playing in the bowl. Abby Burks carted off the field. He never was 100%. He wasn't even 100% mentally. He told us that, but he told me he's back into it now. He's fully there mentally. Mm -hmm. That takes a while for a kid. Trey Lathan, obviously, 
breaking your leg. I mean, he was he was out of it. That was emotionally a lot to get over, emotionally yeah. a lot to get over for the team. He was out for a significant portion of the season. You're going to deal with injuries. Someone's going to get hurt in 2024. It's just going to happen. But they won nine games. They should have won 10 if Green didn't take his helmet off. Maybe they feel like they should have won even more than that. They Green said he thought they were an 11-win team based on the schedule and the talent. They are going to have, for example, the Penn State game at home. It'll still be tough, though. And the vibes are way better. They're more comfortable. I don't think Neil Brown's coaching for his job as much as before. Yeah, if he wins three games, maybe the buyout's <laughs> easier to fire him now. Yeah. But, uh, seem, you know, if they win seven, eight games, they're yeah. not going to get rid of him. Like, as long as they stay the course, people want more than that. Mm -hmm. So do I. But it's not. he's not going to be number one all the all – the, uh, all the over under or the, all the odds about first yeah. coach to be fired. That's not going to be him. I don't think right. coming into the season. So that helps everything. And then if you just get the guys who were hurt that missed half the year or more healthy back, yeah. then you're also better off to start the year. So that's the reason for a lot of optimism there, but yeah, Reed Carrico is the one that definitely jumps him and him and TJ jump, jump out on defense as additions who feel like they've been there forever. And then like we're talking about with Carrico, uh -huh stepping up, showing up and acting like he's been there forever. And as the vocal leader, uh -huh. that's the same thing. Jaden Bray is doing offensively. They are both. Right. If you didn't know this program and you walked into this program and you're from Alaska and this is West Virginia football, you would think Jaden Bray and Reed Carrico had been there for years and are the seniors wow. that have been there from freshman season on and are leading this team. And that's not the case. They're the new guys. So, and, and to be fair to Devin Carter, Devin Carter was that same leader and was like that at practice last year. I just think he disappointed on the field. Yeah. I think Jaden Bray's not going to disappoint on the field. But as you put it, even if they do, there's still addition there by what they're doing in the locker room and off the field that those players are still so young. You have to think a lot of these elite players they're going to be relied on are going into their true sophomore year or they hadn't played that much before and are now going to play, or even Audi Burst coming off an injury. He needs to keep getting mentally right. And, you know, he's a veteran, but you're coming off of a lot of what he had to deal with last year. Having that veteran presence and veteran leadership will be a big deal, but they're also very, very talented and can impact the season and produce too. Right. Um, let's talk about the back end of the defense. A lot of new faces there too. And then Montre Miller's back who – Yes. He's not really new, but he didn't get to play a right. lot last year. Sure. Uh, who on who on the back end uh, really stood out to you? Did anybody stand out on the back end? Um. Well, I didn't get to see anybody doing one on ones with receivers. They didn't right. show us that. So, like that would be where that back end and you okay. have players that would stand out that we're going to see at some point in the future. Right. Here, certainly the next couple of media availabilities, we're going to get more. They've told us that. Right. So that'll be something that I'm really looking forward to seeing is how that looks, honestly. But everyone looked fine in shorts again Aiden Garns is one I have had I'll tell you this I think it'll be very interesting to see how he performs because I've had a colleague who I won't name say that they think Aiden Garns is overhyped because you have right. to remember this is a player coming from Duquesne right. and maybe the program got too impressed by him against them he played very well in that game he's relatively close in the region they've been over there a lot he's traveled down to Morgantown mm -hmm. and visited like six times like he took the the trip down 79 uh -huh. So they might have liked that about him more than how do we know how he'll do in the Big 12. But he looked fine in shorts. Um, again, the Northwestern pair, they're going to be relied upon a lot. And they were yeah. big ads because, again, the depth of the secondary was going to be a concern. And do you have an impact player like a Beanie Bishop, mm -hmm. especially even though Aubrey Burks can be that guy, he's a safety. He's moving around. Aubrey Burks actually is being tried at multiple spots. So having true on DBs to be that Beanie Bishop would be a big deal for this defense. And and any other Hollis or Joseph, I think they both can. And I know for sure that Beanie's success made them interested in coming aboard right. to West Virginia and trying to do the same thing. Just like we're talking about the fit system wise mm -hmm. for Carrico and for TJ Jackson, the fit for them 
I think is perfect as well. But they also look good. Everyone looked good in shorts yeah. and a jersey. I, I can't sit here, stand here, you know, sit here in line and say somebody didn't look good. We didn't get to see the one on ones that I'd be able to really evaluate that. But that's fair. Those are the guys you gotta you gotta really watch for. They gotta they all they gotta perform. Again, um, Jacoby Spells is a player that was supposed to step up more last year that had a big moment in the Virginia Tech game. Mm -hmm. I was writing about people thought he would take his game to another level. Didn't really see that. Didn't have the opportunity to do that. You mentioned Montre Miller. He's brought up by a lot of players. It's like adding him through the portal. You didn't get him last year. It's like adding him again, even though he already knows where to go to the bathroom. But in terms of the field, he he hasn't been able to give that to you. So they're almost adding players that they didn't actually have to add because they're getting players again off of an injury. And you mentioned Trotter. He Again, he missed all of last year too. He was – last year, if we talked last spring – he was a player that I know a lot of people were saying he stood out He yeah. last spring and fall when he got there. He stood out. He was a, a diamond player that Brown had literally said he's going to have an impact this season, meaning last year for 2023. And As then the yeah. yeah, he's Brown, I remember this vividly. Brown <laughs> talked about him saying he would have an impact for 2023. And then a day later, he ends up, we, we get the news that he's out for the year. So yeah. that was a hit emotionally i know brown looked like he got hit by a truck after giving us that news and the talent was there so that's another one that you're going to get more chances mm-hmm. from and then of course all the 2024 signees like abina and others like they they could have impacts but i don't think they're going to even need to be relied upon really like all the players i mentioned anything you get from any of those guys mm-hmm. will probably be a bonus right. because they now are adding more pieces through the portal they have, you know, you lose some players, but they didn't really lose any key guys, unlike two years ago where it was all key guys leaving. And I know a lot of these players, Garrett Green, I know for sure, many others as well. Burks alluded to the fact that maybe more was made out of that than was reality, but I'm sure he was getting calls. I know he was getting calls. I know he got offers from other places. And the vibes are that they want to stay. Like, Bobby Burks even said that two years ago in the offseason – all of the players in their group texts around each other, they were all talking about, hey, you know, didn't go well here, but we can get this uh-huh. NIL deal here. I hope you get this NIL deal here. This uh-huh. coach knows that it was all about individual NIL money. Right. And now Burks is saying now it's about we want to stay here. So let's be real and be honest about the situation. There are players yeah. taking less money to stay and to build right. and to keep on progressing. And yeah, they might want to stay with the same coaches, but. Garrett Green, you know, was spurning opportunities to kind of go closer to home to stay right. and keep this moving. So that has to show you something and tell you something. If they were coming off of the 2022 five and seven season, and these players played the way they did individually, but they didn't win, they're probably not all staying. Or maybe right. if Brown was fired, they're probably not all staying. So right. the vibes are good right now. It's still very, very early in the spring. We'll see what happens when they do put the pads on, when they do start hitting, when they do some one on ones. When they get rowdy out there right now, it's just in shorts. But right now, the vibes are good. Yeah. Like you said earlier, you can definitely sense it in Neil's body language at the press conferences. He's smiling. He's joking. He's loose. Yeah. Uh, he just he just seems like a different guy. And yeah. it's cool to see. I like being around him more. Than I, think his person- I, mean, I think his true personality is coming out more now than it did a year ago. Yeah, and he's he even just on, even just on social media. You can even just look yeah. at that. He literally told us, too, I'm going to be more active on social media. And then if you saw that when I put that news out there, ran then ran the AD, then quoted me and mentioned Brown. And then they're joking about it. And then Brown was talking about the refs in the West Virginia women's game against Iowa. He made a joke about that again to us. Yeah, he's smiling ear to ear at at the Darren DeVries introductory presser. And I'll tell you, I was sitting there with Brown when Ren Baker was introduced and Brown was in the back corner mean mugging ba- sitting there thinking i don't know if i'm getting fired tomorrow because right. shane was his guy like he wasn't enjoying right. that at all he was having fun at this smiling again ear to ear so just that alone is a gigantic deal and brown did say he's not going to pull a lane kiffin here and you know <laughs> and go real buck wild on social media but he is getting fun like you know, he, he's making a comment about Beanie getting snubbed yeah. from the combine, throwing a baller up there when he when he lasts his 40 time and has the best in the out of the Big 12 players. He's getting a little bit more fun. And I think we're also in a situation where it's less adversarial. 
because if you even remember a couple years ago in terms of covering him, like I asked him about Pat McAfee's criticism, and he his answer that. was his answer was I'm not on social media. You are. You just you just tweeted about a recruit 20 minutes yeah. ago. What do you mean you're not on social yeah. media unless someone's running it for you? But right. now he's there. He's on social media. He's going to hear about it. He's joking about it. He's willing yeah. to talk about that stuff. So it quite frankly, it makes my job more fun. It's more fun I to bet cover. It does. I bet yeah, it does. I mean, last year yeah. was like your your you know. Let's be real. Uh, it wasn't that fun covering the end of Eiler. He would sit there to start a press conference, and it would be. <sighs> yeah. Like you feel bad for the man. Like yeah. we're all people. So, right. so, yeah. so that that's just not the vibe that that Brown has now. Brown, Brown legitimately feels like he is enjoying himself, and it was honestly harder to cover in January and February because there wasn't a Ronnie Gallagher, there wasn't drama. They were keeping him. It wasn't you know tons of it wasn't tons of social media activity. People were like, let me take a break because this is just the situation. Yeah, and I think as what Brown even said, like I need to take a mental break. That's kind of good for me. Coaches need that too. He didn't get that a year ago. Maybe he's in a better headspace now. Of course, if this goes awry and they win six games, it's all going to change, and he'll feel that quickly. But I don't think that'll happen. And at least now the vibes are are way better. And I think this will also help them in the future with or without Brown. Like, I think this is also going to be, I'm sure players were texting other players from other teams a couple years Mm -hmm. ago, like, man, this sucks here. Whereas now they're having fun and players like a Reed Carrico, Jaden Bray, they see what's going on and the fun that West Virginia is having and they want to join. So that helps as well. And then of course, Beanie helps promote it. And I, the coaching staff being there and, I, I I I do think everyone fits together, and I do think the vibes are good right now. Again, we'll see. Spring's harder to evaluate than fall. Right. I mean, they don't even worry about Penn State right now. Green right. knows how many days are left until that game, but otherwise, they're not worrying about it. They're not bringing plays up as much. But unlike last year, where they had to start legit competitions and yeah. fix the vibes that were so bad from a year ago. Now they can go in with the vibes good. They know the QB. They know different positions. They know running back. They know receiver. They know tight end. They got team leaders. They got player leaders in all these spots. They're getting healthier as well. They have things to figure out. But now they can just build that chemistry in the spring and then in the fall get more into the plays, get more into the building of the team, preparing for Penn State, really focusing in on that, and then you hit hit the ground running when you start the season. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Mike, uh, one more time before we get to get you out of here, man, uh, plug your work and let everybody know where to find you on social media. Yeah, so on social, it's here on the graphic there, Mike Osti 11, Mike A-S-T-I 11, and then, of course, WV Sports now for the site. You also can find us all over social. We have all of this. I got my position groups. I'm giving you the, the spring coverage as well. And, of course, the hauler. There's there's a special uh, code there for, for type in coos and you get the the VIP access for him. Get the relationship with the hauler with us or working with him on that. There's different other discounts that are available as well for students and faculty members. We break news there. We 100% break news there. It's happened. We do break news there. We give you still most of the content free. It's a very cheap situation overall. You can do it monthly or if you you type in coos and you're with him, the yearly at half of like 20 something i mean that's yeah. relative that's really really cheap for what you're getting because it is ad free as well yeah. and there's you know there's gonna be an opportunity for a lot more coming from that here in the months to come as we get towards the summer as well that we haven't even unveiled yet so all of that is over there at the hauler and then of course wv sports now but uh, i'll leave you with this because i think you've known me well enough if i didn't think things were going well and the vibes were bad and i was really down and everything i'd tell you you would. <laughs> I, oh, would, you would. I, I, I would tell you, and I've told them before, and I would get a text from somebody, but I would tell you, and I would have no problem telling you, and I would go ahead and predict four wins, but right now, I don't feel that way. Good. That maybe could certainly change here coming up. Hey, we will all it, see. All um, it takes is a few portal losses and some injuries, and the whole thing. Yeah, right. Right. Like, they have lost a couple portal guys, I guess, since since last we talked or since, since you know, Austin Cave is gone. Yeah. But Brown is Brown, not sweating any of these portal losses. Right. Like, you ask him, before he would kind of dance around it, he'll tell you, yeah, yeah, you know, he doesn't want to be here. Or, yeah, we wish him well, or he graduated, or he's yeah. he already has been gone for several weeks. Right. Austin Cave's been gone for a while. Um, So, they're not sweating it as much. But yeah, I mean, if, if, you know, there's still players to watch, obviously, that if they lose a position battle, things like that could occur. 
movement could always have already happen, but the main players, the Jaheim whites, mm-hmm. the Garrett greens, even Aubrey Burks, everyone thought was going to leave. I would be, I mean, Aubrey Burke just the other day came out there and said that he's staying for the coaches. He's obviously still getting more money. It's a contract year to get to the NFL. He turned down money elsewhere. If he would leave tomorrow, I, yeah, I'll admit that would be pretty surprising. Yeah. And I would be more comfortable putting up the video and being like, you're pretty hypocritical to what you said two days ago. So yeah. I don't, I don't think those key pieces are going to go anywhere. Could things happen? Sure. But I don't foresee anything that occurs of anyone leaving. I'm sure someone will leave but I don't foresee anything that I'm hearing of anyone leaving that's going to ruin the season. Right. Like somebody might leave, but I don't think it's going to ruin the year. It won't be a, a key Mesador situation. I don't think it'll be a mess. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it'll be a mess door situation where someone who was a, a stud for you not only leaves, but then talks smack about the whole city, the people, yeah. the area, the program right. while it goes out the door. I, yeah. I don't see that happening and it even hasn't happened. Even when Jared Bartley left, like they work with him, he graduated, he had just praises to say about everybody there. It's weird. And he that played he in the bowl with, game. He played he in the bowl to, game, which he didn't have right. to do. 100%. No, he already had his a deal in place. Like you could argue it was, you could even argue it wasn't smart. Like what if he got hurt? Like right. that, he, 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 yeah, he played in the bowl game. Yeah. I mean, that was the thing. Like he played in the bowl game. I was standing there. I was in Charlotte. He was crying after the game. You know, it's not even like he he didn't go to a better program. He went for what we know he went for, and you can't fault him for that. So right. we'll see. It's probably not even worth it to them because, like, what are the, where are they going to go? <laughs> I don't know if he's, like, adding him as enough for them to go anywhere this year. But I don't see any player that's going to leave, that's going to trash the program and then kill the season. I don't see a catastrophic all of a sudden tomorrow – Jaheim White is leaving. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. That's, yeah, it's not going to happen. Uh, they all want to be there and they, they truly believe that that team can go ahead and win the Big 12. Am yeah. I sitting here with you in March saying I'm going to predict them to win the Big 12? No, I'm not ready. I'm not comfortable to do that, even though the vibes are good. But I don't foresee a problem or anyone's, you know, ruining a year by leaving yeah. now, even though there'd be an opportunity for that. And who knows how the roster will look, but. I think for the most part, we're seeing the roster. And I think for the most part, it's going to have some question marks, but still good in the right spots. So things do need figured out. I don't necessarily think they're satisfied fully, but they're in a much better situation than they were at this point a year ago. Got it. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Well, again, everybody, uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. The all of us always ask you to do go check out Mike and his colleagues work over at WV sports. Now join the holler with promo code Kuzki. You get a one year membership for 21 bucks. Can't beat it. You get to read articles with no ads yeah. <laughs> and you get behind the scenes content. Yeah. Yeah. So go check it out. Uh, thanks Mike. Uh, thanks That's again good. to Mike for coming on the show. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Have a top shelf day and Q country roads. <laughs>